Hello friends and welcome back. This is another in our style review. We're going to be tasting some Irish stouts today. I have with me my friend Billy Edwards. Hello. You want to introduce yourself? Tell a little bit about yourself? Yeah, my name is Billy. Um, I've known Ben for a while. We've, we've done a few things together and uh, we see online that we like beers, so we're here to talk about them today. Oh yeah, can't wait. So, Irish stout, what is it? Well, first we got to think about what is a stout. Originally, it was called a stout porter because porters became really popular in London and it was a, a darker beer and it was pretty strong. But a stout porter was even stronger. So higher gravity, higher ABV, a uh, little more flavor. Sometimes they were uh, soured just a little bit. And then since it was popular in London, it carried over to the nearby nations and Irish stouts became popular as well. What we think of now as the Irish stout style is a lot lower ABV than what was popular back then. And that comes from some of the laws in the UK about taxation of alcohol. It all depends on the uh, original gravity of the alcohol. So the more alcohol that's in your beer, the higher it's taxed. The lower alcohol, the lower it's taxed. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. So it, if you go overseas, a lot of the drinks are lower ABV than we have here in the States. We think of anything under 5% as being like a session beer. But uh, most of the beers are under 5%. So the Irish stout, the most famous one is Guinness. And Guinness is known as uh, having a chocolatey flavor. And that's what typifies the modern Irish stout, is that chocolate flavor in the stout. It's going to be a really dark beer, usually served on nitrous, which is what they started doing in, with, in Guinness in 1959, serving it with nitrous. And that gives it smaller bubbles than just uh, the regular carbon dioxide, which gives it a creamy sort of uh, mouthfeel and texture to it. So we've got four Irish stouts to taste today, and we're going to start with the Guinness, since it's the flagship. It's the original. Everybody's heard of Guinness. Yeah. The brewery describes this beer as rich and creamy, distinctively black, velvety in its finish. This iconic beer is defined by harmony. Sip after sip, sweet counters bitter as the malt arrives on cue to complement a base of roasted barley. Just as the unmistakable whitehead sits flush atop the dark beer, so do the flavors counter and combine perfectly. This is our greatest innovation. Truly unique, perfectly balanced, made of more. The first thing I notice is that it is opaque. Yeah. yeah. You cannot see through that at all. And I wouldn't say it's black. If you look down in the corner, you kind of get like a, like a kind of a tannish brown almost. Yeah. Now, the brewery says that it, it's a ruby color. Oh. So if you kind of tip it and put it to the sun, yeah, you can see that, that brownish, reddish color. But when it's all together like that, you know, you sure. can't see through it. A bit of sweetness on the nose. Definitely that chocolate that you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, maybe coffee, too. Right? Those coffee and chocolate fil flavors or aromas are very similar. My buddy has a trick, he says, when you smell, keep your mouth open. Oh, okay. Try that. My nose is a little allergies, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. And since it's all connected, right? Those... Yeah. Taste and smell are very dependent on each other. Oh. Huh. Good note for everybody. I know one thing. <laughs> a cheers. Bit. Yeah, cheers, definitely. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. So... A bit of sweetness, uh, no hop presence. No. Which, that's typical for this style. The hops are there for bitterness to counter the malt, but you're not going to get that sort of hop presence like an IPA, where you taste the, the hop flavors. It's just there in the background for bitterness. Just kind of fades into that dry finish, I think. Mm -hmm. I think everybody's had a Guinness. You should have. Right? <laughs> uh, so... You know, there's not too much for us to say that you haven't heard before. It's a great beer, easy drinking, crisp, light. Even though it's a stout, I would. It drinks like a lighter beer, mm -hmm. for sure. And it really is. Uh, Guinness Draft is four point two percent. 
People think of it as being like a meal in a glass. It's not. It's just as light as your Budweiser. Uh, just with these roasted malts, with the roasted barley in there, you think of it as being thicker. It really is. I don't know if you can almost see that, that lighter color on the edge there, but maybe not. Yeah, it might be hard to pick up on the camera. But Guinness is always a good go-to. Murphy's is an internationally recognized Irish stout brewed since 1856 in the iconic Ladies Well Brewery in Cork. Classified as a dry Irish stout, Murphy's is dark in color and medium bodied. It is silky smooth with toffee and coffee undertones, almost no bitterness, and an irresistible creamy finish. It's starting to rain a little bit, so we've kind of squeezed under the umbrella here. Stay out of the water. It's supposed to mist us for the most part. Yeah. So Murphy's, it looks darker to me than the Guinness. I would agree with that. I, no. I would say yes. And the head is just about as light as the Guinness head. Yeah. A lot more chocolate. Oh, wow. That that really hits you. Yeah. Now, this came in the tall can, and it has a little widget inside that, when you pop the can open, releases nitrogen into the beer. So, I tried to get some footage of that nitrogen separating out and coming up, but... These are fun invention that came out in the 80s and 90s so that you could enjoy a nitro beer away from a tap. You can have it at home. You can even hear the little plastic guy rattling in there. Yeah. A little drier, I think, than the Guinness. It still has that malty sweetness there. I get more chocolate in the flavor as well as the aroma. I get a creamy, maybe almost caramely mm. hinge there. Yeah. Again, no hops. It's just there to balance that sweetness a little bit. Very nice beer. Very similar to the Guinness. I just, like I said, I get a little more chocolate, a little more of the roasty flavors than I did with the Guinness. I, I prefer this over the Guinness. I think I would too. The flavors are a little more bold. Next is the Breckenridge Nitro Irish Stout. This is our first American version of this style out of Colorado. They partnered with Boundary Brewing Cooperative of Belfast in Northern Ireland to create this traditional dry Irish stout with dark character and a classic creamy body. Roasted barley, flaked barley, and Irish stout malt give this black beer flavors of coffee and hints of grain. I like your homemade uh, tripod there. Isn't that awesome? It's resourceful. <laughs> it's a clamp and a selfie stick. The best way to shoot. On a budget. Champagne taste on a beer budget. All right, Breckenridge. It's also black. So so far we're three for three. <laughs> Stouts are dark. I'd say the smell is more similar to the Guinness than the Murphy's. Yeah, the Murphy's really hits you. Yeah. This is a little more subtle. Some sweet maltiness, a little bit of caramel, though not much. That was my other umbrella crashing down. It's getting pretty windy here. I'm not getting rained on at the second, though. Well, the flavor is different, though. Yeah, you mentioned grain in the description. I can get some of those uh, more... Some more caramely flavors? Some of that. Roasty is in there. Oh, yeah, roasty. Roasty on all of these is the main thing that hits you right off the bat. What surprises me is how similar all of these are. All from different breweries, all, I'm sure, using different recipes, but they're all very true to the style. I find the nitro gives them kind of a different playing field than a lot of other beers. Yeah, it changes the mouthfeel. That nitrogen keeps it really smooth and creamy. The head's a little more tan than the others. 
rather than white. Again, your malt bill is going to change that. Uh, the ratios of roasted barley to regular brewery barley and so on and so forth. That's going to change the head and head retention and things like that. And of course the nitrogen is going to change. This head though is really staying on there, even after a few sips. I would say this is a more complex flavor, arguably, you know, to my palate, than some of the others, especially the Guinness. I think that might be attributed in part to it being an American craft brewery. Good point. Maybe the American ingredients contribute some different flavors. Oh, here comes the rain. And there goes the rain. <laughs> Welcome to Ohio, folks. I like this. So, so far, I would go Breckenridge Murphy's Guinness. I'm not so sure that Murphy's in this is about tied for me. Yeah. I, I did like the Murray's quite a bit. A little sweeter. A little bit more hot bitterness, I think, in this one. Mm. Especially sure. right on the end. Does it say what kind of hops they have in here? Not on the can. No. I'm sure you can look it up. Let us know in the comments below. <laughs> so we started in Ireland with our two traditional Irish stouts. Then we had our American version from Breckenridge. Now here is Bellhaven's Black Scottish Stout. But this is still a dry stout, so it should be very similar. It's described as bursting with roast coffee and chocolate flavors. This is a truly genuine and premium pint. Brewed using pure Scottish water and a unique blend of Scottish triple malts sourced from the finest locally grown barley. Billy and I were just talking about how now the sun's going to come out. So in this... And it's raining. <laughs> it's rain Oh! Rainbow? Mm, I don't see it. But, you know, you get to see all four seasons in a half hour here in Ohio. Coming to Ohio, it's a great place. Okay, so Bellhaven Black. Very similar to the others. First thing I noticed, we're back to the uh, lighter colored head. Yeah. Really dark. Well, we can use the sun. Oh, that is red. I doubt you can see it in the camera, but when you hold this up to the sun, it just looks red. Definitely get a ruby yeah. beam through there. Le less pronounced coffee. More dark fruit. Oh, I get a little bit of that. Great creaminess. I get more of a, a smoky flavor than I did from the others. Yeah, between that and, and the fruit you mentioned. What they always say, like dates, figs, all yeah. of those things. Yeah. Even maybe currants. Some black currant. This has got a lot of flavor, considering it comes from you know, Scotland, which is very close to the original. Yeah. Very different, while being very similar. Like, I don't want to give the impression this is a completely different beer. It is very, very similar. You get the chocolate notes, you get that roasted barley, but it's these more subtle flavors that really separate all four of these. We're here to pick up on the nuance. That's our job. Cheers to that. <laughs> <laughs> I like the fruitiness. I think it balances that coffee chocolate flavor well. And I wonder if that's maybe uh, a phenol or ester from the yeast. Hmm. That can happen. I think uh, back to the Guinness as... You know, maybe not one-dimensional, but this definitely has a more well-rounded uh, flavor to it. Yeah, there's there's a lot going on. Guinness I, is marketed towards kind of the masses anyway. You know, I was thinking the same thing. That's a good point to make. When you try to make something that everyone is going to like, it usually ends up being, I don't know, what's a nice way to say it? Less distinctive? Maybe not as adventurous. Right, yeah. Absolutely.
Yeah, I like the Scottish shell. Very nice. I think this is the first Bellhaven I've had. All right, so let's review. Now for the challenge. I want you to pick your favorite and your least favorite, the one you like the least. So we're not saying that any of these are bad. These are all really great beers, but we've got to pick. It's a hard decision. Well, I think I think we kind of decided that towards the towards the bottom is is the standard, the Guinness. Yeah, that um, that's probably the one I like the least. Again, still a great beer, the epitome of the style. Everything else owes it to Guinness, because mm -hmm. without the Guinness, you know, you wouldn't be able to build upon that foundation of the style. Yeah, but I, I really like that each of these sort of brings something different to the table. I think the Murphy's, if you were looking for that chocolate flavor, Murphy's is it. Oh, and just as soon as we cracked it open, you could just smell it. Yeah. Uh... The Bellhaven, which is what we still have here, brings that, that dark fruit. Mm-hmm. And they talked about the, um, the malts they use, the locally sourced grains, and also the local water. Mm -hmm. And that probably all plays a factor in there. Oh, the definitely. The terroir of the beer, <laughs> if we can borrow a wine term. I didn't understand that word. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, you know, how does the land it comes from affect the flavor of oh, okay. what you get? So in wine, they argue like, well, this was grown on the south slope and this was grown on the north slope. Oh, sure. So that changes the grape and changes the flavor. And you could say the same thing for hops or for barley, that where it's grown and how it's grown is going to change how it tastes. Or even the water they make the beer with. Oh, yeah. That's a big deal. Um, and we may get on, into that on a later episode, but, you know, what is in the water, what kind of salts are there, and so on and so forth, is going to change how that water affects the flavors in the beer. And that vocab word was tenwaf? Terroir. Terroir. Yeah, French for just earth. Yeah. So what about this uh, Breckenridge? Yeah, the, uh, the American style, of American take on the style, um, we noticed a little more hops, mm -hmm. um, for sure. Typical of an American beer. And, uh, and and the head was a little darker in color. Not a lot. Yeah. So again, each one of these three sort of took a different spin on this original. Hmm. It's hard to pick a favorite. I'm going to say I'm torn between these two. I, I think I'm between the Murphys and the, uh, the Bell Bell Haven. Haven. Yeah. I, and it depends on what mood I'm in that day. Do I want a little bit more of that malty and a little bit more hop? Or do I want something fruity and more, well, I don't, not more balanced, just, just different, right? That's the great thing about beer. Each one's a little bit different. And we have all these different styles out there that you can find something you enjoy. Oh, yeah. I have my go-to, you know, that I drink every week, but... I always want to try new stuff every week, too. That's the way I am. I am always searching the new, the different, what's new and exciting. That's it's what a, I go for. It's a great time to be a beer lover with all these craft breweries everywhere. It's amazing. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. So that was our style review of Irish Stouts. A really interesting style. Similar, yet subtly different. A uh, lot of fun to taste these, a lot of fun to hang out with Billy. I appreciate you guys hanging out with us as well. Remember, we're going to be doing these style reviews pretty frequently. So if you like that sort of thing, if you want to see more, if you want to see different styles, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and we'll see you later, friends.